Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's podcast. We are part of the world of the awakening, and we, by sharing our experience, we help people who are interested in the human evolution, who are in the search for happiness and joy, asking themselves this fundamental question about the nature, the true nature of the life. So we'll help share uh, our with people. So, hello, Yeva. Hello. Tell me about your awakening experience. So, um, the first uh, awakening experience happened when I was 23. <laughs> so, it was the first because I have a, I had a couple of them. And uh, it happened this way. I was walking down the street in a beautiful, beautiful summer day. And I was just after heartbreak. And... Uh, each cell of my body was in an immense pain and this pain was actually spreading in my body and starting to take over all of my cell from the top of the head till the tips of the toes. And uh, I was hearing the car buzz in my ears uh, uh, and the sun was shining on my face. I felt the beams on my face and... Uh, um, and, and at one point, I felt like uh, I full with emptiness. I full with emptiness. And, uh, uh, and uh, somewhere here in the middle of the chest, I started to feel this vibrant uh, life energy, like very alive. It felt like a bit like um, a river, like a stream of the river. And it started to spread all over the body uh, and I started to feel more and more alive and this energy was actually alive uh, it was not like um, something uh, what is not me it was at the same time me and at the same time not me was whom I can communicate and from this uh, uh, alive and vibrant space within myself I started to perceive the world around me differently uh the the buzz of the cars was not annoying me anymore uh i started to feel like a very pleasant uh, vibration out of the the sound was actually the sound was i was actually perceiving through all my body i looked at the sky and the sky was amazing it was like deep blue color and i felt like uh it was uh, uh it, is, it was inside of me and I was really living through this color and this depths of the sky. And I got a bit worried and scared uh, what was actually happening there. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you here. It's a very interesting story. I would like to introduce to our guests who are watching us uh, on YouTube. Uh, so today we have our main beautiful speakers is Yeva and... Robert, yeah. and today they will share about their experience of awakening and going beyond. So, um, back to you, Yeva. So, what were you scared about? No, imagine. <laughs> I was, I was just normal person suffering and uh, having this huge pain, and like with a snap of the fingers, like I stopped suffering, and I was just in a blissful, amazing state. And, uh, and I was perceiving the world uh, totally, and I got scared that I went mad. And uh, the funniest thing uh, that I actually could communicate uh, with this energy within myself, uh, which is, was at the same time me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I asked, uh, I felt that it is life actually, like which is awakening with, uh, within me. And I I asked the question, like, please help me, uh, please guide me. Am I uh, going mad or what? And uh, it was really interesting because I started to feel the answer. Uh, it was not in words, but it was uh, in, a, in a feeling way, like I felt the answer. Um, uh, at the moment, I was passing down the casino and the life uh, guided me into the casino to try it out and see, <laughs> <laughs> and see if it's not just uh, my madness or illusion. And uh, I never was before in the casino, so 
I was a bit confused and scared, uh, uh, but I went in and it was in middle of the day. So imagine mm -hmm. in the casino, usually people go in the evening. So I went there and uh, it was like a very old building, but very beautiful one. And uh, there were like uh, uh, guys sitting there gambling, gambling, one with the cards, another one was a roulette. and. Uh, I went inside there and um, I stopped in the middle <laughs> mm. <laughs> because I was confused. Where to go because I don't know, I actually didn't know any games. So what was the reason again going to the casino? You wanted to check whether you have what connection with your life or you wanted uh, to test yeah. me? Or intuition, I guess. Uh, the the reason why I went there because life was guiding mm. me there. It, okay. it actually didn't explain me why I'm going there. Mm. So I just listened because I didn't have any choice. I just wanted to make sure if I'm not mad. And the guide led mm. me to make sure if I'm not mad. <laughs> and then I saw one guy was sitting down there and playing cards and he noticed me. He was around 50, 60 years old and he called me like, come, come, come. Please, could you sit close to me? Uh, because I am losing already two weeks. <laughs> mm. And uh, could you support me? And I like, okay, okay, maybe you will bring me luck. Um, well, mm. you know, like in the movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I sat down beside him and I started to feel like some kind of uh, life energy was uh, in my hands and uh, and uh, there was cards in front of me and he asked me, uh, show me which card to lift up. And I went through these cards with my hand and I actually felt that this card, uh, and uh, he lifted it up and he won. And, uh, and then again, he, he put the card and again, I checked it out with my hand and again, I won. And uh, I was like amazed, what is happening? <laughs> like, uh, um, and, and everybody were amazed uh, where we're sitting and looking at that. And uh, this way it uh, lasted for half an hour. So. Each time I went through the hand uh, and picked the card, we were winning for half an hour. And after half an hour, I like felt, oh, okay, so it is really real. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, re feel the reality. It's not like I feel something fake stuff, mm -hmm. but I uh, really feel uh, stuff. And, uh, and then um, I thanked life. Uh, so. I, I made sure I'm all right. Uh, and uh, uh, the guy gave me, I remember this time, 50 euros for mm -hmm. guiding him through and he didn't want to let me go, but I said I need to go and uh, I left. But didn't you have temptation to stay or maybe come back and continue gambling? Uh, actually not because uh, with this awakening, <laughs> with this awakening, uh, actually, uh, mm, I was not uh, anymore uh, this uh, mind, uh, uh, but I was more than that. I was the space, I was this consciousness, which was aware that this is all what is happening. It is uh, uh, for me to make sure that everything is all right with me. And my goal in life is uh, to go deeper within that and to become more aware who am I. And this is nothing uh, to do with uh, going and gambling. And uh, it was something, it was really clear. Uh, like uh, I was using at uh, this moment already mind as a tool and it was not actually even disturbing me. So like I was like very conscious person. <laughs> and why, why did you think that you were going mad? Was it something strange, natural or, or why? What made you think that there is something wrong? Uh, because, as I said, my perception totally changed and I started to perceive the world uh, not through my mind, but through this energy which is within me. And it is like, it is, it is my soul, it is who am I. And, uh, and uh, the mind was just the tool which I could use. So I was perceiving the sound, the colors, people uh, differently was all my essence. Very so. unusual. Yeah, 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 it is. And then 
I went to my grandma uh, and uh, she has always opened the doors really cheerfully say hi come let's have a let's have some tea and um, I sat down and what was a surprise she was telling like these old stories like always but I was hearing what she is actually meaning beyond that beyond that she was actually uh, meaning oh I feel lonely I need love I need care and I was actually feeling that was all my essence uh, like what she's really meaning and I was observing observing this all uh, fully like understanding everything what she wants to uh, convey to me and at the end of the conversation she was really happy she was all shiny happy it felt like uh, uh, she was um, more open to this life than before so so it was really uh, interesting and what happened next? Have you managed to develop these skills, these senses and go even deeper or use them somehow for your daily life? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, re it was really funny because my grandma had actually uh, two canaries, two, two, mm -hmm. two birds, and one of them died. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and she was uh, kind of... Uh, um, uh, making sounds and I fell beyond uh, uh, these sounds that she's missing uh, her friend and so on and uh, I felt like I could communicate with this bird mm. <laughs> and the bird come down because before he was really like uh, making lots of sounds and flying to side to side and really confused and then he he looked at me, he calmed down, he chilled down. So I felt like uh, uh, you can have this communication which was any living being mm -hmm. uh, because you communicate beyond uh, uh, the world of forms. So you kind of connect soul to soul and then there is this connection. Yeah, and uh, afterwards, uh, uh, my journey lasted for two more years, so uh, the life actually was guiding me through um, what what next step to take, what to do, uh, how to go closer with life. So uh, it actually showed me that um, uh, this uh, that I have lots of uh, te uh, tensions within my body, lots of blocks, and the life can't just circulate really freely to myself within myself. So I was placing my attention on those places where there was attention, and then this tension was releasing, uh, and uh, uh, then uh, the life was guiding me through the Bible. Actually, it was not like I was reading it, but I was just opening the any and any page and uh, reading the sentence. And this depth was opening up beyond this sentence. So uh, there was some no, not much sentences I read, but um, and I was going then there and uh, static and was bringing it to my uh, actually uh, real life. Mm -hmm. So the life was guiding me that uh, uh, look at the people around you. I looked uh, to the people around me. And so what you feel? So, and I started to see that the mind uh, actually putting the labels on the people. This is fat, this is this, this is that. And life said like, look, so you labeling it. So look beyond that. And I looked beyond that. And I started to feel that it's just the energy, which is part of me. And this is me who is separating myself from the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, yeah, by the way, for people who are watching for us online on YouTube, it's a live uh, transmission. So if you have any questions, feel free to write in the chat. So I've got this chat open next to me and we'll try to cover. It's a very fascinating story of Yeva and um, we'll um, continue, we'll get back to it. And I would like to ask our um, <laughs> second guest, Robert. So what was your story about the awakening so how it's all started for you 
<laughs> well, while I was listening to all of this, what you <laughs> said, I actually I already feel feel jealous, I guess, in a way, because I was I was chasing this awakening my for ten, tens of years, really. Like for me, um, well, my life was also pretty much regular, I guess, uh, which I didn't enjoy that much. Um, there was maybe not a lot of suffering, but there was light of, you know, you feel like you're just kind of squeezed in this like tiny box and you're living from there. I had lots of tensions inside. I could, could not fully express myself. I could not um, live fully. Uh, and and for me, it was like, well, I guess that's the way that life works. That's how I will live my, you know, like up until I die, I guess. Okay. What else there is to do? Because I didn't see any kind of exit from this. I didn't know how to get out of that. Like no options at all. Um, and then somehow I stumbled upon, well, I stumbled upon many things, but if we turn to awakening, um, there was a point when I started just watching satsangs on YouTube. And the masters over there, they talk about, well, awakening. They talk about being into the depth of the present moment, being aware of who you truly are. And when you are truly aware of who you are, then, well, life is much more colorful. It's much more free. It's much more happy. And, and I kind of felt that. I felt that and I, I decided that, okay, I need to awaken. I felt a glimpses of them a little bit. Um, but like to fully awaken, fully break through, through this, you know, tensions and uh, that life that I'm not satisfied with. And to live in this, you know, total connection with life, total connection with yourself. It's like, it, it's tasty. It sounds tasty to me. And yeah, pretty much I was starting, I guess, chasing this by watching more satsangs. Did it help? <laughs> a, a little bit. In the beginning it did. In the beginning it did because it was, it kind of opened up this idea to me that like you can actually live through this. Um, and that my idea of awakening is, yeah, watch more satsangs, like kind of immerse into yourself into this, uh, apply this knowledge in life. So basically being aware of yourself, not only while watching sad things, but basically when you go to, to work, when you're shopping or something, I was like all the time kind of trying to, okay, I'm aware of myself now. I'm aware of myself now as well. And it's like, I was trying to, to basically stay in this. More with my mind, but still some kind of glimpses of uh, openness, some glimpses of uh, well, this ability to finally at least start breathing normally and kind of live normally, I, I start to feel them. And yeah, basically I was watching lots of lots and lots of sad things while waiting well, when it will finally happen mm -hmm. because somehow mm, not happening. Many people, I think, get this feeling that this awakening is contagious, that by watching or being in the next to a guru, you can get awake. And maybe that's true, but maybe for some... For some, it happens some like this. Yeah. I, I saw, again, some people on YouTube which said exactly that. I was next to my master, I awakened. Like, I'm all good now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, lucky you. So... Um, but yes, like in the beginning, it does give you this freedom and kind of direction where to go. But that's basically that. Like so you had this master step. desire to awaken. I mean, have you searched for any shortcuts how to achieve that, get there much quicker? Or... Not really shortcuts. Not really. I didn't know what shortcuts could there be. Um, I did try some psychedelics, but it was like aside from this story, but it was also with the aim that, well, maybe I'll get some experience, which will again, break me free. Like I will not have this tension anymore. I'll start like, I'll realize something which will <laughs> like click something in me and then, oh, okay, I can start living now. Um, during these psychedelic trips, this stuff did happen, but after it ended, well, it ended so and nothing just really much temporary. changed. Everything. Yeah, yeah. So you were looking for something permanent? Preferable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that would be good. Um, and, and yes, I um, stumbled upon another satsang, which um, was in the form of interview. 
Like there was a girl who was interviewed by another girl, I think, and that girl was just awakened. Like mm. she went through some retreat and she awakened and she was telling about it, how everything is simple and happy. That's, that's how she feels, simple and happy. And I was watching her and like, yeah, she looks simple and happy. I want to feel the same thing. Mm. And then I found out what retreat she went to. And it turns out it's like, uh, it's from a community which is nearby, it's actually in Riga. Mm. And I was also in Riga and I'm like, okay, let's, I guess that's not really a coincidence. But do you think that, as Eva said, the lie was also guiding you? Would you say that? I couldn't, no, not at that point. I was trying to guide myself because life was like, I don't know, it was putting some blocks in me and putting these tensions in me. And it's like, it was this, there's a big separation between mm. me and life. It was like, I, I needed to do something in order to improve I guess my well-being and but there was not no I didn't have this notion that I needed to somehow well merge with my life or kind of accept it or be open to it or communicate to it to me it was something just separate which yeah throws stones at me um but yeah basically I got to I got to this uh retreat as well with the hope okay I'll awaken there for sure if I did not awaken there uh, but I, I got some insights which uh, showed me that, well, there is a way to awaken, but you need to make an effort for that. And for that, it was news to me, because what do you mean effort? Like all these masters say, drop all the effort, you know, just be, be in the presence. Like wherever you are, you stop, observe yourself and well, magic will happen. Mm. It's like, stop chasing stuff. Um, and there they said, you have to work for this. You need to be dedicated to this goal. You need to um, connect with your life. You need to serve others. You need to help other people. And to me, it was like, what do other people have to do with this? What is this? Like, it's, it's weird. But uh, at the same time, somehow, I still, something within me made me stay in this community and I guess explore more what that is. And during the retreats where I was not participating, but I was volunteering actually with translation, at the end of this retreat, I finally got awakening experience, which lasted for a week. Mm -hmm. Quite, quite long and quite profound, I would say. Um, was it during the re retreat or was it after the retreat? It was after. When everybody left, I needed to assemble some technical equipment. And then I got my phone. I read some messages from work, which were quite negative. And I was reading them and I'm like, oh my God. Okay, I feel <laughs> down again. Like all this retreat energy is down the, uh, down the drain. Uh, and somehow something within me like decided, okay, you observe this. You observe this sensation. And once I did that, somehow this energy kind of transformed within me and I sensed something that I noticed that my mind is not sensing this. Like mind can't capture what I am sensing now, but still I'm sensing this. So I put attention to that and it kind of started growing and growing and it's, it was sort of a presence like presence that is always here. It's, it permeates everything. It is like the basis of everything. And it was so rich, like so vivid. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like that, a bit of in a shock. I went uh, in the first floor where there were a couple people. They looked at me, okay, something's happening with you, I guess, yeah. And I'm like, there is this presence. <laughs> This presence, it is everywhere. <laughs> a bit like a bit like a madman. Um, but they they also they kind of felt this and they looked, okay, well, tell more. Well, it's it's yeah, it's just it's it's liberating. Like this squeezed box, this tension which I always feel, it's like it was not there anymore. And Eva also was there and she asked like simple questions. She asked, so with what you are watching now, with what are you looking at the world? And I'm like, that's a weird question, but okay, I'll try. I wasn't watching at the world with my eyes. 
I was watching this world, like this, everything I see from this presence. Basically that presence is watching itself. And where okay. is the presence located? Is it somewhere in the it's space? It's all over. It's like, it's totally, it's everywhere. It's really everywhere. And I felt this everything everywhere. Um, same with listening. Like, what are you listening with? With the same presence. It's kind of, it's perceiving itself. And I am that which was like perceiving itself. Yeah. And it was profound because you can't imagine this. You cannot imagine how it is to, to be in that, to feel this, but it is so liberating. Like it is so like fulfilling. You, you are like fully fulfilled just from the fact that you are present, that you exist, you are here. And that is it. There's nothing, nothing else that you need. And yeah, in this state, it faded a little bit out um, after a while, but it's still in that state. I lived for a week. And during that time, I also realized that it is, it's amazing. It's alive, but it's not always positive. Um, you might seem that it's like, you'll get just blissful states and blissful things, and you'll just be enjoying life to the fullest. Uh, but in a way, yes, but not fully, because for example, when fear comes, when stress comes and I needed to go to work at that period as well. And then some stressful situations appeared. I felt that these stressful situations, they're more like vivid. They're actually more kind of deep. Um, but at the same time, I was not lost in them. Still that presence is like, it captivates everything. It's, 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 it's not covered by these fears anymore. You're not content. Like you're not kind of, you're not lost in them. And then you said that it's slowly starting to fade away. And yeah, have you tried to return to that state or do anything to, or maybe go to another retreat? I don't even know. Yeah, it faded and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure how it is regulated and what decides like, okay, you, you will get it, you'll get it for a week and you'll get it permanently. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how, how that works, but yes, it faded, started to fade. And I felt, well, there's nothing much I can do really about that. Um, because the first fear that I got actually is that it will pass within five minutes of this awa amazing awakening thing, the fear came in that, oh, mate, what if you lose it? And I'm like, oh no. And then I got into this kind of, again, this deep kind of fear, which was, a, it was deep, but um, again, it was not everything that, there's much more than, than this fear. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's, um, it's not stopping you to, to do anything. Um, but yeah, that fear came uh, about losing the state and then, well, I basically let it go. Just whatever happens, happens. Like you, you just continue, well, living and mm. striving to well, get there again or striving to maybe get even further and higher and do well, whatever is necessary to do that. That's very interesting. Um, I was listening to you and wondering that the life seems to be very, uh, very smart and oh, it gives us these gleams, glimpses, these experiences, and in some cases guiding us. And um, sorry, I, I've got a question to you. Yeah, my Robert's experience lasted for about a week. And how about you? So you were 23, you were in this amazing state where you would feel the life. And so what happened uh, after that? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice now to listen to Robert's story <laughs> and to feel it, to experience it uh, within all of myself um, and to remember those moments where I was also participating in his awakening story. <laughs> 
So, yeah, for me, it was like I straight away felt this connection was alive and I felt the guidance. So maybe it was very deep awakening, I could say this way. Uh, I felt that this is just the beginning and I just become aware that I'm the soul, uh, the space which permeates everything. And I started to feel that I'm one to go deeper, closer to life itself. I want to feel it more and more. Uh, so it, it was uh, a feeling like you're coming back to someone dearest for you, um, so dear that there's nothing else in this world so dear like this. And I kind of uh, uh, forgot about it and now I remembering it. And uh, because I had this yearning uh, to come back closer to it, the life started to guide me and give me some hints uh, through the books, through the people, uh, giving me answers within myself. So I was making those steps one by one, one by one. And actually it was leading me to become uh, more un united with the world around me, actually not criticize others to understand uh, what is beyond that, that everybody wants just the one thing, to be loved and to love and uh, to, to be taken care and to care and uh, uh, to, to be the best as they can. But uh, people just forgot about that and uh, they are in those blocks and tensions uh, and uh, and they don't feel this life within themselves. They don't feel themselves. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, from that comes this understanding and, uh, and there's no more judgment. And this judgment becomes uh, less and lesser, lesser ju judgment, more you feel it all, more you're closer to the life. Because life is not just like what you feel inside of you. Life is each person in front of you, each subject in front of you, the way you are holding, the way you're caring of, you taking the cup, you putting the cup. So it's all the communication with the life itself, because this is just the illusion. This it is just the forms, and before beyond the forms, it's actually this life. And what you touch is this life. This is God. This is God. This is God. So everything is God. This life. So uh, becoming aware how, what you bring into this world, and you're trying to give more and more the best of of who you are, actually to help this world to become aware of who it truly is. Uh, because uh, uh, people around uh, lost uh, asleep, and when you finding the ways how to help them to remember uh, this way more life energy goes through you and uh, you become yourself more awake more aware it feels it feels quite amazing mm -hmm. that actually feeling the life and transmitting the energy well, as far as i remember you asked for the life to stop that experience yes what what why was that? <laughs> yeah, why was that? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are searching for it and yeah. you're asking that, no, I don't want this. So, uh, so more I was actually going this path, more I was listening to life, uh, more I felt this inner fulfillment. And uh, uh, it was uh, at some point, uh, uh, I felt like each cell of mine was uh, fulfilled with this love, care, this, um, uh, I don't know, with everything what I could wish for in my life. Uh, and it was overwhelming me. And I was sharing and uh, taking care about everybody, giving all my best all the time, nonstop, uh, making everybody happy. And, and, uh, and at some point I understood that more I give, more happier I am. And, and then I, at this time I was working on the cruise ships around America. Um, I was uh, in my room and I was laying down on the floor and I felt like all of my body is full of this life energy and I can't handle it anymore. It's like too much. It's too much of this goodness, too much of it. You, the physical body is actually can't handle it anymore. And uh, I started to communicate with life within myself. And uh, the life actually 
um, uh, conveyed to me that uh, that uh, to move further on, I have to learn uh, to convey this knowledge to other people how to awaken. But I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to help people to awaken. I didn't know how to tell them about it. And uh, I got a bit lost. And that's why I... Uh, and, and this way, the way I was going, I could not go on because I couldn't handle anymore this much light. So that's why I asked life uh, to have the break uh, uh, until I will find uh, the like-minded people who going the same path as me, who wants to uh, start living from this life, living from this God fully. Uh, and, uh, and then together to move down this path. Uh, um, and um, yeah, when I asked this, uh, uh, and I asked actually not... Uh, to be fully uh, not awakened as to be half awakened. So, so I remember as now, like I was the space around and permitting everything. And then I kind of collected myself together, like in the box and uh, I became halfly aware. So part of me was in the box uh, and part of me was around. So, and this way I lived for 10 more years uh, until uh, I found out about the world of awakening uh, community. I saw some videos on YouTube about awakened people. And this is, was the first time when I found out that this is what happened to me was awakening. And how many years ago did you find about this community? Uh, it was, I don't know, like uh, seven, six, 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 seven six years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you can ask life to give you this full awakening now since you have this amazing community? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so you can, uh, so with this community do, through retreats, through, through the serving, I awakened again fully and uh, now I want to go deeper. So, uh, so I have really to focus and uh, to make this decision, like really strong decision, actually to go uh, really deep because uh, it, from that depends everything. So if you set yourself this goal and you make decision and, you, uh, and then you start acting, there's no way it's not going to happen. It will happen. So your goal is to go deeper. Yeah, deeper yeah, yeah. So present moment. Yeah, because there's nothing else, just this. So this is all is just created uh, for us to go deeper, to know life more, to, to become aware that you're this amazing creator which creates everything and uh, start mm. living it. How Play. about you, Robert? Do you have, what's your goal now? Still, to awaken deeply, but deeply. Um, I had some, well, I can get easily to these states when I'm aware of myself, uh, but it's like, I guess not tasty enough or something. <laughs> uh, so it's, I, I decided that, yeah, the, the depth of this awakening, it is, it is also very important. Um, there's also like one reason, um, which I also, by being in this community noticed, why is that not happening with me is basically, I was convinced that I want to awaken truly, like I, I'll do everything for awakening. But actually, if, if we are, if I'm honest with myself, if I look within myself, um, I don't really want to awaken that much. Like the state which I'm in now, it's much more comfortable. It's much more pleasant than it was before uh, with all these tensions. So something within me kind of decided, no, it's, it's kind of fine like this. Deeper awakening, it would be good. But even, even this state is, well, it's, uh, it's fine. <laughs> and that's actually a huge trap. It is a very, very big trap. Um, 
So in order to get anything done, in order to well, awaken deeply, in order to connect with your life, to get like to live through the God, you need to totally decide that, yes, I want this. I want this every minute of my life and I will dedicate myself for this. And that's, that is the key because this kind of half curiosity thing, it would be good. Well, it's actually fine now. It will not get you anywhere. So if we talk personally about me, basically this is what I need to work on. This is, I need, I guess, sit somewhere to kind of look within and we'll figure things out. Like why, why is it that I don't really want to get that deep? Like, what does it take for me to change this? Mm -hmm. What approach do I need to, to take for that? Mm -hmm. It's, it's about this. And I think it's not only about me, it's about everyone, mm -hmm. everyone who wants to get somewhere, who wants to achieve something. If you haven't achieved it yet, it means you just don't want it enough. Interesting. And what do you think, maybe question to both of you, <clears throat> what lays beyond the awakening? Uh -huh. Is there an end to that or what, what's, what's next? I think he knows an answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, I would like to add a little bit about uh, the decision itself, uh, how much it's important. Uh, I totally agree with Robert that without uh, taking this decision, Fully, uh, and you're not uh, really moving anywhere. And uh, um, when you take this decision that this is the most important thing in your life to awaken or to go deeper, only then the life starts guiding you. Only then. You actually start feeling a life guidance, like you, you, you're really aware of it, like uh and and then you can't uh, change it uh, you have to take those steps that the life is guiding you because you took a decision to take decision it is equal promise <laughs> it is not like oh i take decision and uh, next minute uh i forgot about it it's like you made a promise and you actually uh, aware of this promise each uh, moment of your life. I made a promise to whom? You made a promise uh, to, how to say, yourself to the life. Yeah. So you d you make decision for yourself, and you made a promise to yourself. But because you are more than this body and the mind, you are the space, you are this life. So it is kind of you making this decision uh, for, I don't know, you promising to God, I don't know, to life. But it is equal. You and life, it's equal. You just become more and more aware of that uh, when you go deeper. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is really, really important from where you can start the path, actually. And uh, so, and it is uh, all about uh, what is beyond awakening. So beyond awakening, if you want to go deeper, uh, there is the path. There is a path and uh, you're also taking decision that you want to get closer to God, you want to get closer to life. And if you're taking this decision, the life starts to guide you and uh, you're stepping over your ego, uh, you're working on a self, uh, you serve, you like uh, in this case where I am in the world of awakening community. So we're passing on the knowledge that this exists. Uh, so this knowledge is there, uh, that which and methodology is there, which helps you to, uh, to, to awaken step by step uh, and uh, to move deeper 
deeper and deeper and become more and more aware of who you truly are. So I had lots of like different insights uh, how it is uh, when you go deeper, but uh, it depends uh, where we move now. In many traditions, there is always a, a guru, a master, or a teacher. Why do you think it is important to, to have a teacher or someone who would guide you? Mm -hmm. Why can't you just rely on the life itself? So uh, uh, the teacher is actually... Uh, um, our, our teacher is a self-realized uh, uh, person who already went out of Sansara wheel and uh, he's guiding us through the methodology, through uh, like uh, to, together with the team, uh, he's guiding us through that all. And uh, it is really clear. So if you want to become like a, a professional uh, in any sports or in, in, in anything uh, in life, uh, you, you having the teacher who is guiding you and you can get there much faster than by your own by yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important, the environment, uh, uh, methodology, uh, and uh, the teacher who has really uh, already done this path, where, where you're going. There are many, there are many teachers, or there are many people claim the cell, themselves as enlight, enlightened or fully awakened. So how, how do you know that this is your teacher? How would you, what makes you decide that I'm going to follow this path, for example. So uh, what was for you and for you, Robert? Mm -hmm. I'll begin. Yeah, okay. Start. Um for me it was I in the beginning had this that like there's inner teacher only. Well it's, this is I have my intuition, my kind of gut feeling that leads me to the life. Um uh, there are in the previous um podcast I did mention for our, I guess, uh, very attentive viewers, um, they might know this already, but uh, when you rely only on your inner gut feeling, inner, some judgment, inner heart, as you might perceive it, you might make mistakes because um, this kind of inner gut feeling can come not through your gut, let's say it like this, but through your mind can very well pretend that it's your heart. It can very well pretend that it is leading you to the correct way. And a teacher is somebody who, like, factually, he went through this whole path. He knows how to do it quicker. He sees this and he's guiding you, like, no mistakes. And if you follow his directions, uh, you will well, pretty much get there faster, but you will also see that sometimes well, his directions are not really aligned with what your internal heart is telling you. So you will need to overcome this. You will need to overcome your mind your or your ego. You will need to kind of um, expand your limitations in a way to get there. And that person can do that. And in the beginning, for me, it was hard because I didn't get the teacher at all. I did get his uh, students, though, who were awakened. And there's also a saying that basically you can um, evaluate a teacher by his students. And that sounded logical to me, logical enough. Okay, that makes sense. That, well, yeah, I'll, I'll try the same way as they did, as these students did. Interesting. How about you, Yeva? <clears throat> what made you to decide that you want to be with this community? Do you have this 100% trust into the teacher or there are some doubts still mind has? 
<laughs> so actually uh, life itself guided me to the world of awakening community and I was actually asking life already for three years before I I uh, find out about this community that I already went want to awaken again and I want to go down this path I was praying every day life for one two three hours uh, that because I really wanted to come back on this path uh, going deeper and can you imagine it took me three years actually mm. <laughs> to, to get there and uh, when I saw this videos on the YouTube uh, these awakened students uh, talking I I got straight away this is why I stopped and I want to move further and oh okay so that's methodology this is the teacher and so on also like Robert didn't get the teacher uh, at the beginning but I felt the life is guiding me there and I trusted uh, and I trusted and I went down there so and uh, I actually feel that I'm in the right moment in the right place and and also the teacher gives us so much this life knowledge that I can't even handle because before I was getting this life knowledge from the books just little tiny drops like uh, there's uh, Concordia to lives so there was getting some wisdom uh, pieces which resonates within you know you read something oh okay this is the, this is what I needed so then I can take a next step and uh, and then you listen to music and you got inside then somebody told you something you got inside so and, and now this all guidance happened happens uh, through this life knowledge that uh, teacher conveys and uh, and you can move as fast as you want you don't have to search somewhere to look something it is all there uh, it just depends on your decision and it depends uh, how fast you want to move and that's it and this is all for you there <laughs> mm. Yeah, when I was going through the same search, I went through different uh, teachings and satsangs myself, and there was this inner desire to find to find the teacher. That's what brought me to uh, this community. And what I learned myself, and what also Yev and Roberts um, told us today, that you find the community, you find the teacher, you find the knowledge and everything that you need, but you still carry on doing this inner work. So mm. this little fire, you never let it to stop. That light, you never let that light to stop shining um, through you. And it is, yeah, I'd like to add, it is an important moment because even if you find everything, if you have a teacher, you have like-minded people, you have environment, you can still be sleeping in these old things. <laughs> Comfortably. <laughs> totally. Comfortably. Yeah. So the biggest thing here is that inner desire to go through this. And these three things, uh, they, they help tremendously along this way, if you have this desire. This inner search, never stopping inner search, and the desire which you have to fire, fire it up by yourself, and uh, all the time the search, how to go deeper, how to get there, and uh, all the time stepping over yourself, and, and that's it. So, and this other things that Robert mentioned it just helps you. Yeah. Is there anything else would you like to add or say? I've got a few minutes left till the end of the podcast. Maybe there's something burning in you that you want to <laughs> This is what I want to share to the world, to the space. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, uh, uh, the most important thing, uh, if you if you really want to awaken, is to make this inner decision and to follow it, whenever it happens. So, and then where this journey starts. Set. If you want to awaken. <laughs> well said. <laughs> and if you can't make this decision if yourself you can't awaken yourself help others to awaken <laughs> <laughs> that's how the light works yeah. so thank you for thank you Yeva and Roberts for your amazing experience I know it's 
much more deeper. We probably covered maybe 20 or 30 percent of the experiences and challenges and all the difficulties and beauties that you went through. But uh, yeah, the time is up and we'll see you at the next podcast on Tuesday. Thank you for joining us.